Also, before we start the video, I'm gonna put this in the beginning. Video gift box password, 0223 amid. All right, 0223 amid. All right, finally a new waifu. I saw that we we're getting a new Rand skin too. I've only seen the preview in the actual Epic Seven game, so I can't, I'm, I'm hoping that it looks good. Uh, either way, a mid preview. Hopefully, she's not mid. Let's just get right into it. All right, so she it showed that she was an ice unit. Oh, is she a healer. Oh, okay. I like how they're covering her cleavage. That's funny. To ensure the survival of her people during the Great War, after being released from the seal, she returned to Cruz's forest, where alongside her sister Arya. Oh, Arya's sister. To prevent any oh, that's kind of hype. She begins investigating materials left behind by the pilgrims. While reading her father Laidan's research, she discovers the Tree of Genesis. Which is in Eurasia, the birthplace of the Shadow Wars. Hoping for a better future, Ahmed, Ron, and Arya board a ship bound for Eurasia. I, I'm really liking the vibe of like the background whenever they use their specials now, like Bihu's special. Oh, <laughs> his, his special alone made me summon. You can learn more about this story by playing the special side story. Uh, let me actually check out the base stats because we have that here. Effect resistance, base effect resistance 30%. That's really good. Speed 117, that's not bad for a healer. 480, uh, 4,855 HP. Defense 655, okay. That doesn't look bad. Oh, look at Ren. Oh, is that going to be the skin? Oh, that's clean. Imprint concentration effect resistance. That's that's good too. Skill two, forest blessing. Grants extra turn. Skill nullifier once to all allies, and increases combat readiness by up to twenty five percent. Twenty five? That's a lot. Skill three, touch of hope. With Elven Magic, dispels two debuffs from an ally, except for the caster, and grants swift attack. Increases attack of the target for two turns. Okay, Touch of Hope. With the Elven Magic, dispels two debuffs from an ally, so one ally except for the caster, and grants swift attack. Also increases attack of the target for two turns. At the end of the turn, Increases their combat readiness by 50%. It is dispelled once the effect is activated. Oh, that's actually that actually sounds really good. So she pushes for she she pushes CR by 25% for all your allies except for herself because she gives herself an extra turn. She dispels two debuffs from all allies. Well, no, from she dispels two debuffs from an ally except for herself, and gives them increased attack, and whenever they get their turn, at the end of the turn, they increase combat rate, and it's by 50%. <laughs> Wait, hold on, at the end of the turn, increases combat readiness by 50%. Is it their turn? We'll, we'll see. Is it their turn, or at the end of her turn? Increases attack. Okay, so there's the swift, right? Swift attack. At the end of the turn, at the end of their turn. Oh, interesting. Increases combat readiness by 50%. It's dispelled once the effect is activated. It's interesting. Increases combat readiness by 15%. That's that's good too. By up to 15%. Okay. When 10 soul is consumed, applies the combat readiness effect to all allies. What? I didn't even read the soul burn. Combat readiness increased effect will be applied to all allies. 10 soul to increase combat readiness of all allies by 15%? That's kind of busted. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> like, if they're running some- Yeah, if they're running someone like freaking Selene in the back. Oh, hold on. Am I blocking Selene? Yeah, they're, if they're running someone like Selene in the back, instead of doing the non-attack skill, you can push your entire team by like 15% just for soul burning. Oh. 
I like that. That's actually kind of clean because that means you're not like completely handcuffed to using a non-attack skill. Fan of light and dark. One of the objects that Spirit Boy Noyas After using a non-attack skill twice, increase this combat readiness of the ally with the highest attack by fifth by ten percent. We'll go up to fifteen, and has a looks like fifty-ish percent chance to increase critical hit damage for two turns. I'm thinking of this on DN, right? Like DN pushes herself up by 50% and then you do your S2 push another 20%. That, that sounds kind of cheeky. I like this though. This is this is good. Mom Morancy is going to have a field day with this too if you run her for like for those that run her for Wyvern. Has up to a 70% chance to increase critical hit damage. I'm not gonna lie, this actually looks like a like fun character to play with. I'm definitely gonna summon. I, I was I was gonna skip too. I'm like, unless the character seems busted-ish. Yeah, I don't think she's busted, but I think she has a lot of utility, which I think is really good. My only issue is that she's another water healer, and my water healer is like Who's a soul weaver that's ice that's like kinda not maybe not meta, but used a lot, right? Mom Rancy, Deanne, Amelia. I can't even name like two fire soul weavers. <laughs> like maybe a Katie's. <laughs> uh, um, and obviously Tamara, but like. A Katie's is literally the only one I can think of. Oh, Ning Ning, I guess. I need to work on my Ning Ning, Loki. Does she get like another turn off that? But increased crit damage, like chance to increase crit damage actually seems pretty good. I like her artifact on her. She doesn't look like she heals though, like at all. Which is funny for Soul Weavers. I still love Bihu's, like, animations. Resistance. Yeah, they have Selene. Uh, dude, uh, why can't I pull her? <laughs> I wish I picked her, like... My dumbass decided, uh... To get my choose the ML early. And then literally like a week after I chose my ML, Briar Witchy Saria got the announcement for her buff. I was so annoyed. Look at that S3 animation, bro. Okay, so it's at the end of their turn, not the, at the end of any turn. All right, good to know. You see that Briar Witchy Saria over there at 50%? Okay, that's good. I like that. Maybe if, uh, <laughs> maybe maybe if she came out before they buffed Zahak, he'd actually have been good. 